Rockstar, I feel one of the best movies I have seen. I agree. For real. Whenever you know, there's that moment at an airport or at a restaurant when people come up to you, even before they'll take Kizzy Basu's name from Dil Bechara, it is Mandy from Rockstar, and that's when I realized the. Power of rock star, the power of films. Yeah. You know. Okay, so tell me about Imtiaz Ali. Okay, so he's lived a very vibrant life in Hindu <laughs> college and in <laughs> Jamshedpur, and a lot of what we see are actual experiences he's had. That's why he's obsessed with trains. So you see it in Jab We Met. You see a train in almost every film of his. Whoa. You know, Pankaj sir. He is the most generous and kind human. Have you like, seen that meme where he just? He's like this. This scene. Have you seen that? Which one? Mirza Purka. The best supporting actor goes to Pankaj sir's neck. <laughs> He just did that. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Figuring Out. Today's guest, who is guest, is a guest of mine. A friend of mine, whom I very admire for her unconventional career choice. इनके पास बहुत ऑप्शंस थे ये एकेडमिकली स्कॉलर है गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट है डी की अपने स्कूल की टॉपर है इनको लाखों करोड़ों की जॉब मिल सकती थी पर इन्होंने अपना वो सेटल करियर छोड़ के एक अनकन्वेंशनल पाथ चूज़ किया क्योंकि इनका पैशन था एक्टिंग करना और फिर आज ये बॉलीवुड की टॉप अपकमिंग एक्टर है आज का जो पॉडकास्ट है वो इस बारे में है कि कैसे आप अपना एक कन्वेंशनल पाथ छोड़ के नए शहर में जाते हो पैशन फॉलो करने के लिए उधर आपको चैलेंजेस क्या क्या फेस करने पड़ते हैं इनकम को लेके अपनी फाइनेंसेस को लेके अपनी फैमिली को लेके अपने करियर एडवांसमेंट को लेके अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ को लेके इन सब के बारे में हमने बात करी है टुडेज एपिसोड इज़ रियल इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि हमने ये समझने की कोशिश करी है कि जब आप बाय एक्सीडेंट किसी पैशनेट करियर में एंटर करते हो तो क्या आपके लिए चीज़ें ईजी होती है कि डिफ़िकल्ट होती है और अगर वो डिफ़िकल्ट होती है तो कैसे अपनी रिलेशनशिप अपने कोस्तास कलीग्स अपने करियर और अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ के साथ बेटर करके लाइफ में आगे बढ़ा जाए इन्जॉय द शो बट बिफोर यू इन्जॉय द शो गो सब्सक्राइब राजमानी क्लिप्स एंड राजमानी शॉर्ट्स चैनल क्योंकि वहाँ पर हम इस बड़े से पॉडकास्ट की छोटी छोटी क्लिप्स डालते हैं ताकि आप बहुत कम समय में एक बेहतर लीडर बन पाओ और हमारे गेस्ट को एक लीडर को बेहतर तरीके से समझ पाओ इन्जॉय द शो बाय द वे फर्स्ट टाइम आई थिंक एवरीबडी सॉ यू वर्स मैंडी रेट आई रिमेंबर एंड देर वी यू योर योर डायलॉग वेर यू आर लाइक कि तुमने मारा है उसकी बीमारी जोड़े सो रॉक स्टार आई फील वन ऑफ द बेस्ट मूवीज आई हैव सीन आई फॉर रियल नॉट बिकॉज यू वर इन इट जस्ट बिकॉज आई लव द मूवी आई डोंट केयर हु वॉज इन इट लाइक इट विज सो दैट ट्रू फॉर एवरी वन लाइक इट जस्ट एंड यू नो दैट दैट मूवी गेट सो रियल क्योंकि I think शायद एक या दो ही मूवीज होती है जिसमें मैं हर कैरेक्टर से रिलेट कर एग्जैक्टली मैं वो ही जैसे आज तक वेन एवर यू नो दैज दैट मोमेंट एट एन एयरपोर्ट और एट अ रेस्टोरेंट वेन पीपल कम अप टू यू इवन बिफोर दिल टेक किसी बासूज नेम फ्रॉम दिल बेचारा इट इज मैंडी फ्रॉम रॉक स्टार एंड आई वॉज मैं अपने भाई से बात कर रही थी जब एयरपोर्ट पर हुआ था एंड आई वॉज लाइक ब्रो इट्स बिन इट्स बिन इलेवन ईयर्स उन्हें एक सपोर्टिंग कैरेक्टर कैसे इतना हाउ कुड आई टच दैम सो मच एंड दैट्स वन आई रियलाइज द पावर ऑफ रॉक स्टार द पावर ऑफ फिल्म यू नो इफ इट सेटल्स हियर इट सेटल्ड फॉर लाइफ ट्रू सो इट्स इट्स जस्ट द मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल थिंग दैट वॉज देयर राइट यू नो आई थिंक एवरी सॉन्ग देन एवरी कैरेक्टर एंड इट वॉज टाइम कि ऐसा लग रहा था मुझे आई हैव बीन दैट कैरेक्टर जब कोई फिल्म चलती नहीं है तो आई थिंक इसी के वजह से नहीं चलती बिकॉज दैट कॉड is not getting struck what do you think movies kyun chalti hai i really think that films are meant to be stories of human beings okay human beings are 90% emotion baki 10% sab kuch aur hota hai but hmm. 90% we're all just emotional beings and when that strikes the films just 
स्टैंड द टेस्ट ऑफ टाइम इफ यू टेक यू कैन टेक दिलवाले दुल्हनिया ले जाएंगे hmm. कल होना हो रॉक स्टार एनी ऑफ दीज फिल्म आर जस्ट सेटल्ड इन आर माइंड वी रिमेंबर we remember shahrukh khan's eyes yeah. and that that one tear that drop because that's what touches here you can have fancy action sequences all of that but if there's no emotion there's nothing but isn't it i feel there are few movies which i really like because wo bahut exaggerated version hai kyunki main ha i can't live that life like kabhi khushi kabhi gham correct For fantastical example. films yes like i feel like i need maybe a helicopter se utrunga i can imagine myself with shahrukh khan like I, it's such a grand life that's yeah. why i like it obviously but the larger part is because i could relate to that those yeah, emotions yeah i think you enjoy that grandeur but what you're actually relating to is his relationship with his father with his brother with himself hmm that's the real connect but why do you feel like if it's about relatability and emotion that's what log as a travel karta hai this is a genuine question yeah हर चीज इतनी रोमांटिसाइज क्यों करके दिखाते लाइक आई नो दैट दिस इज नॉट दिस इज नॉट हैपनिंग लाइक दैट यू नो योर रोल इन दिल बेचारा लाइक एवरीबडी क्रेव फॉर दैट दैट रोमांस दैट इमोशन अब वो रियलिटी में रोज नहीं हो सकता बट तुम तो दो घंटे में दिखा के बता देते हो मेरे दिल और दिमाग में तो ऐसे ही चल रहा होता है इट्स लिटरली लाइक गुड फॉर लाइक योर टू मंथ हनी मून पीरियड नो बट आई फील लाइक when you fall in love it doesn't it feel like that yeah when you fall in love tab it feels like that okay yeah but then you have to maintain that relationship for a very long time yeah and then wh- that's when life hits yeah. and i'm i'm not telling the relationship is bad i feel it's yeah. it's an amazing feeling it's beautiful and there are phases jahan pe tum रॉकस्टार वाली वाइफ में जाते हो फिर तुम दिल में चार वाइफ में जाते हो फिर तुम्हें कभी कभी खुशी कभी गम भी करना पड़ता है फैमिली के साथ राइट यू हैव टू डू एवरीथिंग कभी आपको देखना है उतने लेवल ऑफ हार्डशिप फिल्म में अगर आप सैटरडे संडे को जा रहे हो तो वो ही अगर आप लड़ाइया और इशूज देखोगे then how is cinema serving that function of escapism at mm. the core of it films are always supposed to be escapist yeah right like the fact that jordan had to go through heartbreak to find true love is a cinematic yeah. telling of yeah. Of, of his of life, of, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so you're supposed to. You will actually go to bed in your head. You'll be singing Sadaq, <laughs> not go to an actual concert. <laughs> But <laughs> that's the idea. Yeah. I think films should be escapist. Yeah, they shouldn't be too real. Okay. Beyond a point. So you the if, so you mean to say that if it's a good film, the formula for a good film is it should be very real in emotions. Yeah. But provide you a feeling of escapism. I think so. I mean, life. I am no one to. Yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> no, that's your personal formula, preference as a consumer. As a consumer, now as a as a working actor also. जैसे जब पहले तो auditions ही करते थे तो auditions में आपको कुछ बताया नहीं जाता, right? You don't. You'll get a call from a casting director that X Y Z producer is making a film. ये audition scene है. प्रिपेयर करके आ जाओ सर hmm. इसके पहले क्या होता है yeah. बाद में क्या होता है फिल्म की ओवरऑल स्टोरी क्या है नथिंग देन वंस यू फिनिश दैट जर्नी एंड कम टू द नेक्स्ट फेज व्हिच इज यू गेट द ऑनर ऑफ बीइंग नरेटेड स्टोरी सो नाउ अ फिल्म मेकर और राइटर विल अप्रोच यू एंड बी लाइक आई वॉन्ट यू टू हियर दिस स्टोरी दैट्स वेन यू स्टार्ट रियलाइजिंग दैट वॉट डू यू इवन कनेक्ट टू एज एन एक्टर आप किस चीज से कनेक्ट करते हो एंड आई रियलाइज दैट I have been narrated some really complex lead मतलब हजार चीजें हो रही हैं plot भी complex है पर जब emotional core intact नहीं है character का मुझे या तो yawns आने लग जाते हैं या मैं दुनिया भर की चीजें सोचने लग जाती हूँ which is why I feel like without an emotional core there's no film yeah interesting okay let's let's talk about this about the process yeah okay. ki you start from it i i think you don't have any background in the movies nobody in your family has been in the in the industry nothing Not, no. nobody right no nobody. no acting no theater nothing zero so you're a newbie in the whole industry right yeah. at least you started like yeah, that yeah 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 <clears throat> so process kya hoti hai ab kisi ko whoever is watching let's say kisi ko actor banna and somebody is thinking that hey main bhi ek school mein hu aur mujhe bhi mandi banna hai <laughs> 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 what is the process of becoming an actor 
tell me so step by step so i can tell you okay the honest part about my journey is that mandy banna hai was a decision that was taken for me and i didn't take for okay, myself okay taken for you matlab tell me in the sense that when mukesh chabra came to my school and he was basically rockstar ki 50% shooting ho chuki thi aur unhe ye mandy ke kirdaar ke liye mili nahi rahi thi ladki okay they wanted a kashmiri looking there was this brief right so i think mukesh then decided that i he will himself go from school to school to find this girl okay so that's how he, they were shooting in delhi at the time that's how they came to my school modern school and they told our theater teacher in school ke ye brief hai agar is brief ko fit karne wali koi bhi ladki aap jante ho to please unhe audition ke liye bhej do okay and they were in our school campus so and i've been a dancer since i was 3 4 years old so kathak and jazz and so typical every school function you're mm-hmm. performing and all that okay, so you're the bright child you're that child <laughs> you're, you're over that enthusiastic child. and yeah, always yeah you're that child jiski wajah se hame inferiority complex hota hai school mein okay you were also that child no i'm not <laughs> okay no, so no but happened. anyway yeah so mm-hmm. i um, and acting wasn't something i used to do i used to be dancing Dance. all okay. the time i was about 13 at this point So then my seniors are like, oh my god, you know this casting director has come and Ranbir Kapoor ki film and like Raj sir is calling mm-hmm. you. So I'm like calling. Why is he calling me? I don't know how to act. They like just shut up, come. <coughs> so I go. That's when I met Mukesh for the first time. He said, I'm going to take your audition. I was like audition. I, I didn't audition know what the again. word meant. I was like audition. What is it? They gave me a brief. Ke bas ye ye bol do. Ye ye kar do. and i was like sir mujhe rehearsal mein wapas jana hai i was just thinking about that because i was this dedicated school kid okay <laughs> and i did it he was like okay done i gave it didn't realize ki hua kya hai went and next morning mama got a call from rockstar's ad team saying that sanjana has been finalized as mandy and you guys have to fly to dharamshala tomorrow morning and i remember mom tried to frantically get in touch with me so she called my teachers i was in school and i remember the position where i was standing under our banyan tree when i when i spoke to her and that's when i mean that mandy was a decision taken for me it was something that now when i look back it feels like it it feels like god's way of making me Guiding enter this world something. okay tell me one by one i'm going to name the actors Yeah, uh, and the people you worked with and defining moments. Tell me one thing about them which you really loved when you were working with them. Okay. So Ranbir Kapoor start with him because of it started course, with him. It started with him, and everybody uh, loves him. Yeah, with R K, I think what stood out. We have like a bro relationship, like we talk shit, uh, but it is his ease, his the the ease with which he creates. the magic that he creates is what was shocking to me because mujhe lagta tha as actors you know you have to be very like make a big deal about the craft and the process but he will be ranbir one second and jordan the other second and you will not know what happened in the middle so that is the biggest takeaway the ease with which he carries his his fame it's like a easy t-shirt he doesn't okay. wear it like it just- a stiff tuxedo and and the ease with his craft did, did you notice something about him which probably we from the far don't see i'll tell you one experience i had with rk <clears throat> to ranbir kapoor i met him i think this was yashra studio uh, when i was in first year or second year of my college and ranbir kapoor was there for something and wo bahar khada ho ke he was just standing right next to his car and us time i think he used to have a tel hmm. like that there used to be his car he was standing and i was star struck because it's like yeah of course i've just come from indore to mumbai yeah, it's too and much. ranveer kapoor dikh gaya bhai yeah. like it's a it's a big thing okay so he's just standing there and i saw him and i'm just doing like this right and i'm like what and he just like hey, dekh kya raha idhar idhar yeah and i was like main <laughs> right main idhar gaya phir bolta photo chahiye main la ha yeah classic <laughs> like photo yeah. chahiye main la ha and then he just uh, फिर ऐसे फोन निकालते अरे लाइट नहीं अच्छी आएगी इधर बोला फिर लाइट की अच्छी लाइक ठीक है और कुछ ही है नहीं आई थिंक दैट्स इन अ फॉर आई वाज लाइक व्हाट वाज दिस या 
because i expected other so i don't want to name another artist i saw the same place right, right? and the other artist I, again i was star struck right after him like 3 yeah. 4 days later yeah and i that looked at different. him he looked at me i was going sir can I, and he just yeah like pushed and he was standing so exactly i think i think that ranveer ke like he just made it. and then second time i met him we both played football together hmm. uh recently there was a match between his team and our team right uh and we were playing right and he was right there he just comes and then you know game se pehle tum sabko se you know you just shake hands yeah. and like good luck good yeah, luck yeah, good yeah. luck he just comes my turn we we both hands and while he's going out is he looks back yeah to go me dekha hai kya apan khelenge kya pehle and i was like nahi hum nahi khelenge kabhi yeah chalo ab khelenge agli baar yaad rakhunga yeah. <laughs> and then wo- correct I was like, "What is this? You? He doesn't have to say that. No, of course. He doesn't of have to course. tell me that. Okay, I've seen you somewhere. If I'm not, probably, <coughs> ab main yad rakhunga because ab next time I'm killing. Yeah. No, absolutely doesn't have to. And I think like <coughs> this, I can narrate hundred incidents where, especially in those easy, those early moments, right? When you're, एक तो आप बच्चे हो, दूसरा आपने कभी ये किया नहीं है, तीसरा you're doing it with you know the biggest yeah. young superstar yes. that our country has seen uh if if he didn't do the 100 things that he used to do to make me comfortable there would be no mandy without jordan mm. there's no mandy and by that i also mean that without rk there would be no sanjana at that point as an actor because the first scene of my life is i'm doing it with him and there are long scenes and imtiaz's mm. scenes are complex in the mm-hmm. way that they're written so I remember, like we would go to a corner. We would have some. Now I don't remember the conversations, but I remember having these chats where, after that three four minutes of that conversation, I knew exactly what I want to do in the scene. Like mm-hmm. then I have no questions. But before that, I think he could see my nervous energy, me scrambling, me like getting fidgety, and then it would be like. And that would be the ishara. Then we'd go some to <laughs> conversation we'd have, and then I'm a different person. It's like I'm hypnotized. Okay. <laughs> so it's just that it's some magical. Okay, so tell me about Imtiaz Ali. Okay, so there's a conspiracy theory which goes on on, on internet that Imtiaz Ali apni life ki uh, incomplete <laughs> stories movies me dikhate hain. Right? Is that a thing? That is, is that true? I can tell you that that's true for every writer. Okay. बिकॉज इट्स एक्चुअली ट्रू फॉर एवरी आर्टिस्ट मुझे लगता है क्योंकि आप अनकॉन्शियसली ना मतलब आपकी लाइफ ही डिक्टेट करती है आपके आर्ट को एज मच एज यू ट्राई टू डिनाइट आई इफ आई डू अ सीन राइट नाउ वेन आई गो टू सेट एंड आई एम आई एम रियली हैप्पी और आई एम रियली सैड आई एम नॉट थिंक अबाउट वेर दैट्स कमिंग फ्रॉम बट आई नो इट्स कमिंग फ्रॉम me and hmm. my experiences so with imtiaz also he's lived a very vibrant life in hindu <laughs> college and in jamshedpur and a lot of what we see are actual experiences he's had that's why he's obsessed with trains because even his production hmm. house is called window seat because when he used to travel from jamshedpur anywhere it was always on a train hmm. and he would be that curious <clears throat> kid observing people so his memory of childhood is that Just window seat so you see it in jab we met you see a train in almost every film of his Whoa. you know so his life i'm sure has impacted his work yeah, that's yeah i didn't know about this yeah. train but now that i can think of yeah <laughs> think about it there'll be a train scene in most of his films yeah interesting then you did movie with sushant singh rajput yes. what made him so loved Like he's one of the most loved actors. He was and he still is today. Yeah, as he should be. Right. Yeah. And like, what do you think? You worked with him, and your yeah. first big movie as a lead of actor course. was with him. Yeah. And I'm sure that was really special. Yeah. So, what think, do you think? Like, what? Because I became his big fan, like really big fan after MS Dhoni, because I'm a sports fanatic. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's. I at any point I couldn't feel that it's not Dhoni. Like absolutely. It just, He would, and the way he would, you know, do his cricketing stroke, and I was like, "Yeah, no, hundred percent." क्या बंदा है यार? Like, I could see, and there's a song in a movie, "Be Sabria." In that song, mm. I just can't see Sushant, and I can instead of his face, I see my face. Like mm. he was so real in that song. I was like, 
So what made me love him was I could feel that he's me. He represented like a common man there. Exactly. I could never feel that he's way away from me. Yeah. You know how with other actors, let's say I would, yeah, I would talk about Hrithik Roshan, right? Correct. I There's feel Hrithik Roshan far is, away, like yeah. he's a Greek he's god, not, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So Shant, he's like, he's one of, he's one he's of me. us. Yeah. Like he's just one of us. Yeah. Like he's there. He's re- playing my life. Absolutely. So that's what made me love him. Yeah. I think the the reason why he will always be so loved is because of his his blinded honesty and dedication to his purpose his craft when when he is in a character there's nothing else that matters and it's it's and i i'm not that honesty can't be taken lightly because it's very rare hmm. that was that's his rare gift that's what i believe and that's what i saw you know and and that sort will transcend time forever so he was like super honest with his art with his people yeah with his purpose mm-hmm. with with his art mm-hmm. and and in this world that's the toughest thing to do what and was there any moment with uh, on the set with you and him where you felt hey this is why he's genius like is there any ha- endless because there'll be any specific incident you can tell me so many but we were shooting in paris and there is that scene where uh, basically there's this really emotional scene where we are uh, at a graveyard and uh, it was so cold in paris that day that i started getting basically like i started getting frostbites and all of that everywhere and mid scene my nose started bleeding like bleeding bleeding and it was a very challenging scene so we had close ups both of us hmm. and because i think any actor who's that evolved like he was will know that it's extremely hard to get back into that emotional place again i remember tr- trying me him trying to tell me without saying it that that's happening because i was going on and on mujhe pata hi nahi chal raha main scene mein beh rahi hu aur wo ho ja raha hai naak bhi beh raha hai saath mein and then he was trying to save it trying to save it and then ultimately when i didn't realize and then when i did this in the scene and saw and then then he called cut in the way that the way that not everyone looks out for you like that not everyone takes care of you like that and that always always stood out to me mm. do you find hard making friends in industry or is it easy for you i don't i i mean i don't think about it as industry or otherwise but in life only like if i connect with the person on a any level it could be a it could be a stupidity level like just cracking <laughs> right. dumb jokes or an intellectual level for me it's just that and luckily i think the film industry is made of very passionate very intelligent people so there's always right now i'm just in that phase of you know absorbing from them because like i am working with people far more senior to me mm. they've Pankhacher. seen much more of life they've <laughs> seen they've had much more of a journey so it, i'm in that student phase i feel nice and then with the ones of my own age group there's like <laughs> like whether it's tara or anyone ball. that's just it's a ball cuz <laughs> you're you're just <laughs> trying to keep it as light as possible yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> so hey, tell me like the, just this last question on this and we move towards other part yeah last is pankaj sir are okay. i have you seen that meme where he just he's like this this scene have you seen that which one mirza pur ka ha so he's like the best supporting actor goes to pankaj sir's neck <laughs> <laughs> he just <did> that <laughs> That oh was, my god. And that is so true. The guy Oh my god. How can he get into Dude, any he movie? He is the best. Any role. He whether is, lead non lead, you don't care but you are dying to see him. Oh my god. Because Pankaj Tripathi he has become like He's a <laughs> he's a I don't know, he's a emotion. He's a Yeah, he's an emotion himself. Yeah, like Pankaj Tripathi is an emotion. He's an emotion. Yeah. 100% and when when I got this call to be like we want to narrate this film to you which is a father daughter drama being directed by the director of pink with pankaj sepathi playing your father 
I'm like mujhe nahi sunni it's a yes i don't want to know when you're shooting anything and and then you know people start telling me that like if you prepare at 100 with pankaj so prepare at 300 because he's that well pre- like he's just that good uh-huh. so main matlab nervousness ke next other <laughs> other right. level pe pahunch gayi hu and then that whole process of prep and reading started and he is he is the most generous and kind human beings like i i mean this in the most absolute way like he will he will look out for you he will want you to do better he will help you he will share years of his wisdom with you ke agar tumhare liye uska 2% bhi benefit ho jaye to i am happy it's just been like i came out a different person after that film like the way rockstar changed me Ten hmm. years later, Dil Bechara changed me, and now I think as my fourth film, this one has shifted something because just spending those two three months with him every day was Did it was like challenged. A, I felt challenged. I felt nurtured. I felt um, I felt supported, and I felt playful. Like every scene used to feel like now we're we're like knocking on a tennis court. and now he might drop it but he might smash it and i have to have the skill to keep the rally going you know and that's what i crave as an actor because i'm here to do that do you enjoy fame by the way do you love it i love it if i can know for sure that it's a by product of the connection people feel with me if whenever i felt i've got fame for something that Hey, fame is fame. Let's just not complicate it. It's just like, hey, do you love getting recognized? I enjoy it. You enjoy it. I I enjoy do you, it. Do you not feel like, hey, मुझे वापस मेरी private life चाहिए ऐसा fun चीनी? मतलब वो moments भी कभी कभी लगता है. कभी कभी लगता है जब when when you realize that I think only in the last couple of months I've realized that when you step out of your house, hmm. you belong to. a different world yeah and to the world right so you can't get offended if someone takes a photo of you you can't whatever all of that but broad stroke i have to say that i do enjoy it <laughs> you have to say <laughs> no no i mean i uh, i'm saying that you say that you enjoy it yeah. i yeah because i love it i tell you like since the time i think i've worked all my life yeah to get recognized and validated by people Yeah, and I don't feel ashamed by saying this. A lot of people say, "Hey, validation is bad. Uh, working for getting recognized is bad." I'm mm. like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Yeah, like I just love it because why do you work? True, you work to get recognized. Even either it's in your field or for the world. I mean, to each their own. But we all work to get recognized and get money and get power and get power to create a good impact and positive impact in the world. So yeah, if you're getting it, then. Like you know, I I just yeah I I love it and I want to keep doing it. I want to give my hundred percent hundred yeah to do even more. Like For there sure. are times that I tell you, okay, there are times that when I do something, like I'll give you an example. I talk about PR events. Yeah, just the word. Like there there are times that I know that I don't belong to this PR event yeah. and I don't want to do that. I don't think, but. It's like then my team tells me that hey, it's better for you to go there because. X Y Z for reason. It's important, and I, just because my team tells me that's important, I'll go and show up because I know that I don't want to be guilty ever because I left something which could have made me better in my world hmm. or better known in my world. Hmm. Because I really do feel that uh, best doesn't win in this world. Best known wins. Right. So that's why okay. I want to be really, really best known in whatever right. I do. So I really enjoy it, a from the reason that I love getting recognized, yeah, and b from the reason that I know that if you're not best known, you lose. Mm. I think every person in the world should starve, should work, should crave to become best known in their field mm. if they're really ambitious. Because if you're best known in your field, all your dreams, il- achieving them will be so much faster that you mm. can't even re- you can't even think of. So. That's interesting. That that's how you look at it. I think mine comes back to the way you said that famous fame don't complicate it. तूने अभी complicate तो किया. But 
आई विल सी नो कॉल आउट ऑन माई ओन शो गे नहीं आई एम जस्ट सींग दैट सी बींग आई फील दैट देर आर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड वेज टू बी रेकग्नाइज एंड टू गेट फेम स्पेशली इन टूडे सोशल मीडिया वर्ल्ड देर आर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड वेज यू एंड यू नो दैट इट कैन बी थ्रू द पेंथराज यू डू पब्लिकली इट कैन बी थ्रू फैशन इट कैन बी थ्रू एनीथिंग एनीथिंग यू से But there are bizarre For ways me, to get famous. That's what I was trying to say initially. Maybe I didn't articulate it correctly. Is that I want to be recognized and loved through the characters that I play and the stories that I tell, and through the work that I do in education. These are the two. Me being the youth champion of UNDP India and the connection I make with the world there, and as an actor. An actor. these are the two ways in which i want to be recognized i don't want to tomorrow say something random catches public fire and i get recognized i don't want recognition at the cost of anything i want it at the cost of a good performance and good impact i feel a desperate need to prove myself to myself hmm. desperate need that i will not deny but not i don't feel the need to prove myself to others I don't carry that burden with my with me at all. Yeah, that's that's very wise of you to say. I'm at the same age. We both are same yeah. age, yeah. and I feel there's you a constant. You and I are wired yeah. <laughs> to completely differently. <laughs> very, very differently. Yeah. Because I feel there's a there's something in me who wants to prove to the world. There's something. I'm very. I'm very inferior and insecure. Like I don't come off like that. but i'm very in insecure with myself like mm. I, i just keep i'm an overthinker mm. i i feel inferior in front of others even though let's say you and me are friends and we'll randomly talk and there's no need we're different feel different worlds mm. i'll feel i'll find something in you which will make me inferior oh. like it's just so bad thing oh god i start comparing myself with random people on internet i start comparing myself with you know like my friends oh. with people in my industry it's just so bad and there was a recent reel i saw of somebody and i it hit me home okay right? and he said people who are emotionally wounded from their families and not been covered always try to cover that feeling of void by an achievement mm. so they are finding reasons how can they achieve more mm. <laughs> and it can be in professional life it can be in personal life it can be with people so you're always constantly finding because there's a part of you which was because you always saw someone else in your family or as as growing up as a child maybe your father or your mother who was always trying to achieve something they never gave took out time to give you attention and made you feel comfortable so you're always trying to achieve and that's why you're finding reasons to make yourself that oh i'm not enough mm. I need to be better than her. Mm. I need to be better than him, mm. and I need to just constantly keep achieving. And that sense of achievement will get us some level of uh, confidence or mm. happiness. But that just fizzles out the moment we achieve it. Exactly. And then it goes on. So right. you know, I am every day is exposure to very high performing individuals, especially now. And what I've learned from them is that everyone is finding their own. something to motivate them yeah so someone for someone it's it's a void from childhood for someone it's a desperate need to prove it to themselves apne hi saath lage hue hain ki matlab pata nahi what that struggle is or what that journey is for some it's to the world but we all we all need something to motivate us and i think that's okay yeah i really think that ultimately that's okay okay uh there was one line which you said in the beginning hmm was a very very interesting i want to know your take on that hmm. love is a compromise oh god <laughs> okay why do you feel love is compromise i don't think love is a compromise by the way by more than love love on its own is not a compromise as much as to to make love healthy and lasting both the people involved need to so you mean a relationship is compromised like a relationship needs to be for the longest time that is compromised because you compromise some of your needs and your partner compromise some of their needs and together you make it work because you really love each other is that Ma what you mean yeah yeah 
maybe that but what i really mean is love is compromise <laughs> and i'll tell you why is because it, it's it, love is an emotion and it it manifests itself differently over a period of time right initially it's it's almost like lust where it's like you just really want that person emotionally physically everything and then as you get that person it evolves and yeah. it changes and that process of evolution is where i feel compromise starts coming in where like if whenever i've really felt like i've i've obviously not loved 18 people in my life but i i feel i've experienced love till now once in my life and i used to believe that that person is you believe that they're golden right yeah. there is no flaw in them 100% they can't be yeah you know because it's like oh. yeah it's like <laughs> i mean everything about it is great and them is great and then then you realize that okay there's so many things that that i didn't realize about this person so you that's the first degree of compromise where you're compromising with your own expectations even that's where it starts and then it's the physical manifestation where like you you do things in your lifestyle your goals your ambitions mm. to make it work which is the relationship aspect of it um but i believe love and i meant it not just romantically like i mean i mean it in every, every sense, sense of the of world it. uh because i feel like i've had to do it with in my own life through my 20s as like my friendships evolved from passionate teenage friendships to stable adult friendships they evolved in what we do for each other our expectations of each other yeah. all of that right and that evolution involved involved a lot of compromise i feel you know you talked about this thing that hey you love someone for something and then you start finding flaws and you're like yeah. oh we never thought of this you know my perspective is a little different i feel i know that this person has let's say n flaws but i try to find the one reason that i can love them for yeah and i just want to stick and go hard on one reason 100% i know that the 10 things wrong one thing is right and i want to go all in and i'm okay with the flaws because it's it's that feeling i feel love is that feeling where you're like you know teda hai par mera type yeah, yeah. vibe like it's just absolutely so i feel like and maybe some love is not a compromise like if it's you don't have to compromise when you're in love because you just love being around that person yeah so you don't have to compromise to be around that person you and when you fall in love with the right person right this is what i feel because when your values match uh i think probably i'm too too young to say this but i genuinely believe that you don't have to compromise and it never has to be compromised because that person automatically understands so it doesn't feel like compromise yeah yeah like it's like let's say i'm super ambitious really really ambitious and i will till the time i achieve the certain goal or a dream i have i won't give my significant other as much time as she deserves right but if she really loves me we both love each other we'll get it yeah we don't have to do it and if my significant other is like okay my partner she's she's like hey she loves little things mm mm-hmm. i'll make sure automatically that, that i'll do, do like those. small little course, things to make to sure make that sure hey she's that happy she feels special she yeah. feels special she feels good yeah so that just compensates for everything right because there's no f- need to feel i think the bad love is love is compromise when you feel guilty that you're not doing enough for other person and yeah. that's why you have to compromise your needs and wants in your lifestyle in order to be with them Yeah, I mean I've it's just like I feel that's true, like a kind of love which is That could be or it could I on maybe you know compromise is a strong word and it can be misunderstood in different ways. I just feel it to the extent that like and I've seen this in in my parents who fell in love in school and they've only ever dated each other and then they got married to each other and it's been like 37 years. Wow. So I have this very idealistic notion of love especially growing up because I used to think ke aise hi hota hoga life mein you meet that one person then you date that one person then you marry that one person and cut to I'm 27 and you know life has shown its many colors but what I've noticed is that say for example if my dad has is known to have a slight like say that he's he can get angry on small things or get angry easily my mum over the years 
has learnt to realize that he doesn't mean it keep it aside and then give him that time and then talk about what needs to be talked about now that is you can look at it as okay it's, it's my partner curve. i it's a flaw I, i ignore it or you can look at it as she's compromising to her expectations of oh sh- he shouldn't have said that he shouldn't have spoken like she's like it's fine we'll give it time i mean compromises as little as that so that learning to, curve <laughs> that learning curve and also i feel like two ambitious people in our generation we are all so possessive about our goals and so blindsided by them that we get really caught up in in who should move to which city who should sacrifice that that promotion or that next yeah. goal like we are all it's different Wired, right? so yes. we're not wired to like our parent generation i think used to make these decisions at the f- drop of a hat that i love this per- what you're saying i love this person forget it we'll figure it out yeah we- figuring it out <laughs> i don't think our generation is like that yeah that's true that's true you know that's true i think a lot of people a far majority of people won't compromise on moving a city for different people and rightly so because yeah. they have their own life and their own goals and then their own dreams and then their own circle so, so that's what i'm saying that they're not ready to, to compromise. compromise yeah that compromise at all yeah. now i get it yeah that's can why you, when can you do long distance i will choose not to <laughs> <laughs> okay tell me a quick thing okay how difficult like do guys come and approach you or is it difficult now because now that you're an actor you have a certain aura people know you it's it has reduced because people are afraid of your power mm. because this happens with famous people this happens with this happens with really pretty hot girls really famous people really far more f- powerful people in any way really intelligent people who give that look as well or professionally if you're truly really accomplished it happens like guys feel afraid and you have done i think list mein sari cheeze tick kar di tune so i think <clears throat> mere itne even in school and college and stuff i don't have as many incidents of like any guy really coming up to me like that but of course it's it's more with the people you're exposed to naturally or the friends turning out to be right <laughs> ouch it's a, it it's like, like damn uh-huh. i thought oh. tum to bhai the <laughs> <laughs> so then <laughs> i was like i guess not okay uh, ouch okay is it like is that with you as well like from point 1 in from first one or two interactions you know that are you capable of having a romantic relationship with them or no like it's just you just friend zone them or like romantic yeah, zone yeah i think that happens na that natural slide like very natural there are like it's like two baskets <laughs> this person is in <laughs> friend zone and this person is in the other basket and then when friend zone person tries to get away from this oh, you're like family zone yeah. bro <laughs> <laughs> straight like uh no 100% that happens and so, <laughs> and it's very clear and i don't know wh- why it happens it's probably just like vibes yeah right? it just it just gives i think but yeah. you know there's a there's a pattern i was reading about it how you can break patterns of people if they have been perceiving you in a certain way oh yeah uh, so there's there's a really good book about it i forgot the name and the whole book was about that this there was this man who was in ucla mm-hmm. so he was super popular guy extremely emotionally aware emotionally available for people and for 2 3 years he was so emotionally available that he ended up becoming super close friends with like 20 30 girls oh. in the, right <laughs> and they all like friend zoned him because he's like my shoulder to cry on and oh, all of that right and girls would like fall for like all the fuck boys in the world and they would come to this guy and he this then he wrote a book because he went on this quest that i cannot have a romantic relationship with people because i never make first move anything romantically okay he's always just like Hey, I'm going to support you as a friend, as a family, as a brother. Okay. Like it's always that. And then he wrote a book about how you can turn and get away from that family zone and get to this. And then his his whole book is about breaking a pattern. Oh god. That if you're and the book is divided into three parts, okay? The first part is where from friend zone to romantic. Okay. Then the second part is if you're in a romantic relationship with someone, how do you get to friend zone? 
wow like, he's uh, convoluted it, this yeah, like this like, it was really good and then he thought is how do you use this power of seduction in order to get ahead in your career oh god like three parts divided it's yeah. a really yeah. really cool book i mean i i feel like the one thing i I've, i've understood for sure is that i'm almost naturally repulsed if that person is making i feel like even if you're making a move on someone do it do it in no. a sleek way okay what's the sleek way for sanjana <laughs> sanghi give it to us so i mean imagine like how do people should how do how can somebody approach you I, let's say you're you, at okay, i don't want to name the bar yeah. okay like you're at, you're at this bar yeah. where i, I like don't i meet you often yeah. right so that you're at this bar and if i come and meet you it's like hi and then there's some guy who tells me like hey can you introduce me to this person because as long I as i don't know this back story yeah. and when you come up to me and and it's flowing so, and easy it's cool but okay tell me two situations how how can i introduce you to someone and second how can somebody directly come to you how can you introduce like if you're let's say i'm a friend and i want to introduce one of my friends to one of the girls he's interested yeah. in what should i do you should like every time that you have done uh just bring a friend and be as nonchalant about it as possible like just okay just ask casual as as casual as hey, possible just me right yeah. thought it'd be interesting to yeah because i think that when two people meet in that pressure of hey like this person is interested in you slash vice versa it just kills, kills whatever whole potential whole... vibe mm. there is okay so be be casual about it yeah. that's one be now easy second about is it. let's say if some guy who's watching this wants to come up to you and has a potential you know no maybe this guy has potential yeah, right that's potential I yeah remember. so come up to you and be like hey i wanna like what should how do how should they approach you they should <laughs> <laughs> they should I, it, this uh, is a weird thing. I'm thinking about all the guys who have and where it's where I've enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because you, a you give me give me a vibe that so, though you're super friendly, yeah. But when I see you from far, you give me a vibe that hey, touch me not, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Just just like stay away, like don't yeah, talk to I'm, me. No, I'm in my own zone, bro. Like just that's why I'm stay saying. Away. I think I think the moment I sense from the the guy that this is there's a possibility of a great. Connection. friendship or connection or conversation then i'm going to talk now where that goes is different to so, wo kaise aaye like somebody wants to Bas come and talk to you yaar just just turn up because it starts with physical attraction then conversation and then it turns into romantic thing right so yeah. somebody who is attracted just want to come to you and be like hey i want to talk to you so kya kare hi or Nahin, start with like I, a cheesy pickup line i think that doesn't line. okay th- i maybe that piece now happens less the random person coming up to you and just cheesy pick up lines <laughs> yeah pick up lines to can please stay inside the cheese because okay. we don't want them you don't want them no no you know, nobody can should ridiculous. come to you and be like i can oh, lost in like one... are you google maps and oh. shit like that <laughs> tell me one girl who has fallen for this i don't know yeah. at least on instagram reels they fall on it <laughs> yeah that is true actually instagram reels us have seen those reels where guy would randomly go to a girl and put like some chick uh, like some pick up line yeah, and the and girl then, like oh, oh nine out of 10 she'd love me. it and then they not happening they find it oh you give me chalo jaldi <laughs> so give me how should somebody approach you and then that's how we end honestly i think uh, they need to just find a common friend <laughs> <laughs> and then casualize the situation <laughs> <laughs> If I'm being brutally honest, because when it's someone I just don't know, then I'll probably just take it as a like someone who's who likes my work, and then turn into that. Hey, do you want a photo zone? <laughs> <laughs> so typical, typical actor behavior. Actor behavior. <laughs> I'm, I'm being ridiculous. What did you? Like in a car. Ouch. Okay, guys. Here's a here's a good tip I can think of right now. I just came up with it. Okay, so if you're friends with someone, you can def- definitely go and have a conversation, casualize the situation. Yeah. If you're not friends with someone and you happen to see this person at a bar. Yeah. Okay. Become friends with bartender. Oh yeah. Tell the bartender to casualize situation for you. Make drinks. Talk to her. 
and then you swoopily enter and have the same kind of drinks and then start the conversation facts this in a european city sounds much more much likely <laughs> than in a delhi or chandigarh but theek hai <laughs> if somebody can pull off i can just yeah. think of random ideas yeah. i'm helping my boys out there yeah Come yeah on. you're very helpful i must say <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much sanjana for coming here i it was a pleasure talking to you thank you thank you so much thank you raj for being here. proud of you thank you थैंक यू सो मच ये एपिसोड एंड तक देखने के लिए हमें बताओ कि क्या ऐसे गेस्ट आपको और देखने हैं कि नहीं देखने हैं अगर देखने हैं तो कैसे क्वेश्चन हैं हम उनसे पूछें और नहीं देखने हैं तो कौन से ऐसे दूसरे गेस्ट हैं जो आप चाहते हैं कि हम हमारे शो पे लेके आएँ क्योंकि हमारा मिशन सिर्फ एक है कि हम वर्ल्ड के और इंडिया के बेस्ट लीडर्स लाना चाहते हैं आपके लिए ताकि आप और हम उसे सीख के एक बेहतर लीडर बन सकें इस कंट्री में बिफोर यू लीव प्लीज़ शेयर दिस एपिसोड विथ वन पर्सन किसी एक इंसान के साथ शेयर करो जिसको इस कॉन्वर्जेशन से हेल्प होगी और वो अपनी लाइफ में एक बेहतर लीडर बन पाएंगे अनटिल द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड कीप फिगरिंग आउट